Мисис Колбачевска, how is the attitude of Polish Мисис Колбачевска, how is the attitude of Polish people towards the day of labor, 1st of May, changing in the last 30-something years? Hello. In fact, for most of Polish people, the 1st of May is now the day when you go out of the city, when you have some fun with your friends and family, you relax, you are happy because of the warm weather, etc., etc., The feast has been deprived of any significant meaning since socialism fell. And today, if people are asked about their attitudes, they either mention this day of relax or they start talking about uh, how it was under the socialist time. Basically, uh, after the real socialism fell in Poland, nobody tried to do anything significant on this day. Of course, there are still left-wing marches or uh, trade union marches, but this is just a shadow of what we used to have before 1989. And uh, in fact, even the organizers don't expect thousands of participants on such events. And uh, on this, uh, it is for years, the right wing tried to attack 1st May as a kind of tradition that belongs to the past. But now they even don't bother to do it. They simply know that the date does not mean anything to most of people in Poland. And uh, it it does not seem that it would change in some near future. Um, What is, uh, in fact, um, um, the attitude towards labor unions in Poland? I know that uh, there are uh, a lot of members of labor unions in Poland, unlike other countries in our region. Uh, So what is the specifics and what makes this labor union so interesting to participate in in them? Yes, it is a a kind of paradox. Trade unions have lived a moderate revival over last years. I could say more about that in a moment. And at the same time, 1st May is, as I said, not a date that is treated very seriously. I mean, the fact that the trade unions cannot mobilize more than a few hundred people for the 1st May marches does not mean that they are helpless and does not mean that they are not doing many more interesting things. The trade unions in Poland, uh, I would say, are not very weak, but not very strong neither. They are, of course, not the same mass organizations that they used to be under socialist rule. In the 90s, a lot of people gave up on their trade union uh, membership, believing that unions belong to the past and that now it is a personal initiative that counts. And a lot of people, I would say even more people, were also forced to leave trade union organizations because the uh, law that on trade unions that we have, the law on collective bargaining that we have in Poland is in fact very strict toward trade union organization. You can't organize a union in a small company when you don't find 10 members. And if you decide to go on strike or organize a protest, you need to undergo a four stages of negotiations, mediations, and then voting before you actually can do something against the employer's will. This also makes people think that unions are ineffective, that they only collect the membership fees but can't offer very much to the members. And that is also one of the reasons for which some people are not interested to join unions or that they abandon their membership. On the other hand, unions are now getting more positive vibe than ever. The young generation or the young workers who were born at the end of the socialist times or at the beginning of the capitalist era in Poland uh, start to think of unions as of something positive. This is something new compared to the previous generations. For young people, unions are an institution that could democratize the the labor market, an institution that could actually support them, support their rights in a confrontation with the employers. And this is a generational change. This young generation that lived and worked only under capitalism declares that they want strong unions, they want unions to participate in public life and even have a stronger influence over politics. 
Generally speaking, uh, one, one more thing also should be mentioned about the trade unions in Poland. Our trade union movement is very divided. There are there, um, one of the uh, union confederations, the Solidarity, which is the continuation of the famous social movements in the 80s, is a union which is, I would say, more right-wing, more Catholic, more solidarist in the sense of Christian democracy. And it is also on very good terms with the present conservative government. It does not mean that they were able to uh, force some um, revolutionary changes in the labor legislation. Nevertheless, they were able to negotiate some decisions that were favorable to different groups of workers. Another group, con uh, another confederation of trade unions, which is called All Poland uh, Union of Trade Unions, is generally speaking more militant, secular, not Catholic, more to the left, generally speaking, uh, more oriented towards a kind of democratic socialism or social democracy. Um, and uh, as I said, they are generally more militant and the unions that belong to that confederation uh, led some of the most militant strike actions over the last years, including the strike in Solaris factory, the bus factory in 2022, which lasted six weeks and was one of the biggest strike actions in Central Europe after 1989. Also, we have uh, some smaller trade unions, which are usually more radical than the big groups, and uh, I would say there, there is one more important thing to know. Trade unions are, in my view, much more democratic organizations than political parties in Poland. And very often they are the only groups that uh, citizens of Poland are actually active in. They are, uh, some people on the left complain that they are not radical enough or that they enter in all kinds of deals with the employers. Of course, this happens as different people form trade unions. But uh, generally speaking, if somebody enters, politi if enters a political party in Poland, we often have a second thought. Perhaps he is not sincere. Perhaps he wants some personal business to be fixed. But when somebody becomes a trade union activist, it means that this person has a motivation to do some social work. Um, what are the issues that um, uh, most uh, represent greatest uh, interest for the labor unions and for workers uh, to fight for in the recent times? Uh, the, the, the key issues that unions are involved in are the wages for years. Uh, the biggest uh, confederations have demanded the salaries in Poland to go up. And the, the second big issue is, um, I would say, the question of so-called junk contracts or different temporary labor contracts that are signed with people in Poland, even in the, situ even in the condition when someone, somebody should get a standard labor contract. So uh, trade unions, first, uh, uh, first of all, they try to uh, fight against these very basic pathological uh, phenomenons of the Polish labor market. Low wages, outsourcing, and these, as I said, junk contracts, where, for example, somebody is doing regular work, uh, coming to uh, the workplace for eight hours every day, but then is not offered a proper contract which gives him or her all the guarantees, access to healthcare, uh, etc. But instead is given a kind of contract for a civil job which does not even guarantee uh, the right to have a free day, a day off. Another issue that was, has been important for trade unions in Poland is to modernize and to adapt to the uh, current labor market as it is today. Trade unions in Poland were born when most of the workers worked in big factories or in smaller factories. But anyway, this was this model of work when you are connected to one workplace for a long time and uh, you do your work together with your workmates, etc. And now the Polish trade unions are reaching out to people who do platform work, who do just temporary jobs, who are employed through outsourcing companies 
And so this is, there is still a lot of to do in this resort by the trade unions. It was a huge success for Polish trade union movement last year to set up a first organization of platform workers, namely drivers who bring food uh, on personal orders through a platform. Um, and this uh, and now there are constant attempts being man- made to organize also Ukrainian workers where unfortunately much less successful uh, success has been achieved so far another issue that is pretty important for polish trade unions is uh, namely this labor law or the law on industrial disputes which is very strict and which uh, makes workers undergo different stages of mediation Uh, negotiation and so on before a strike is actually allowed. Trade unions have been fighting for years to have a different law on industrial disputes more based on Western European regulations when a trade union can actually proclaim a strike without all these complicated preparations and just then see if the workers want to participate or not. However, in this case it is more likely that trade unions will have to face even tougher legislation than to see it liberalized because the current government wants to limit the possibilities of smaller trade unions, the smaller ones which are usually more more radical, and leave certain possibilities only to the biggest trade unions which in practice also are more willing to seek a kind of compromise with the employers. You mentioned that Ukrainian uh, workers uh, may be also an issue and um, the war in Ukraine led to a big influx of Ukrainian refugees in Poland. So how is um, how are these social issues related to the war in Ukraine and Ukrainian migration into Poland um, affecting the fight for labor rights in Poland? In fact, there was a huge migration of Ukrainians into Polish labor market even before the war. I can't give you an exact number because nobody has it, but at least one million Ukrainians were working in Poland before 24 February 2022, and a fair fair share of this uh, of this number were actually planning to stay here forever or at least for a very long time. Now, when we have a couple of millions of Ukrainian workers here and even more of them planning to stay in Poland, indeed, it becomes one of the key issues for Polish labor market. Namely, if these people are not integrated into trade unions, uh, they will form as what a big reserve army for employers. And... Uh, mm, I mean, if it would be much uh, more difficult even for Polish workers to demand their rights, if employers know that there are millions of people willing to work for a lower wage. And unfortunately, this is the case already at the moment. Most of Ukrainians are used to work for lower wages than those that are available in Poland. And so they often tend to agree for worse conditions than the Polish workers. On the other hand, this is this problem is not as big as it used to be uh, a few years ago, as Ukrainian workers uh, are also more better organized than they used to be. They have their own channels of information exchange and of supporting each other. Uh, this is, of course, very unofficial, but uh, I, I, what I want to say is that these people are not, are not helpless when confronting the employers and so on. Uh, Unfortunately, as I said, this this organization, these contact networks of the Ukrainian workers happens in most of cases outside the trade unions, as uh, there were no regular contacts between Polish and Ukrainian trade unions before the war, and there were only a couple of attempts of Polish trade unions to set organizations specifically addressed at Ukrainian workers. And most of these attempts were not really successful neither. What is happening now is that uh, there are new initiatives on both sides. Uh, The trade union, which is called Confederacja Pracy or Confederation of Labor, which is a part of the All Poland uh, Trade Union Confederation, has been very active 
in supporting Ukrainian migrants. They opened a special info points after the invasion and they started supporting migrants very effectively. And the second organization I need to mention here is Inicjatywa Pracownicza or Workers' Initiative, which is in a permanent contact with the Independent Union of Miners in Ukraine and which has co-organized a couple of uh, humanitarian aid convoys uh, coming to Ukraine, to the city of Kriverich. Mm. So, I, as I said, most there is a lot of work to do here. There is a lot of work even to encourage Ukrainians to join trade unions, to stop them thinking that you come to that they came to Poland to earn money and not to get into trouble. But uh, on the other hand, these Ukrainian workers are already most of the Ukrainian workers especially now with the war in their homeland, they want to stay here for longer. And they are likely to be fully integrated in the society very soon. And it is also possible that they will be members of the trade unions as active as their Polish colleagues. We will have soon, however, even a bigger problem with other groups of migrant workers who are also coming to Poland. Here I mean the workers from the Caucasus, from India, from Bangladesh, who are becoming even more and more numerous with every year and who are completely disinterested at the moment in getting unionized.